the pyramids were really built, there's something about the desert that feels eternal. The silence, the emptiness, the way the air trembles with heat and history. And then, out of nowhere, stone rises against the horizon. Sharp, geometric, almost alien. The pyramids of Egypt, for thousand years old, and still standing like they've been waiting for us to finally understand. For centuries, we've stared at these giants and asked the same question. How? How could a civilization with no machines, no iron tools, no modern cranes, lift millions of massive stones into place so perfectly that even a razor blade can't slip between them? Was it genius engineering, divine help, or something lost to time? The story begins not with gods or aliens, but with people. Real human beings. Sweat, sand, and ambition. And maybe, something far more profound. Let's go back 4,500 years. The banks of the Nile are alive with sound, hammers on stone, the hum of human voices, the scent of wet clay. Sunlight glows on freshly cut limestone as tens of thousands of workers, farmers, craftsmen, and laborers converge on what would become the Great Pyramid of Giza. Not slaves, as once believed, but skilled workers organized and fed by the state. Each man knew his purpose. Each block had a story. Back then, Egypt wasn't a kingdom of endless desert. It was a green valley pulsing with life, thanks to the Nile. Every year, when the river flooded, farmers couldn't work their fields. So they were drafted not as punishment, but as part of something bigger, the construction of eternity. Imagine this rhythm repeating each year. The flood comes, the people gather, and for months the edge of the desert transforms into a living engine of creation. Food, beer, song, and sweat. There's exhaustion, yes, but also pride, because they are building something that would outlive them all. Each stone of the Great Pyramid weighs about two and a half tons. There are more than two million of them. To move even one makes you question everything about human endurance. But to move two million and stack them into a perfect geometric marvel aligned almost exactly to true north feels impossible. And yet, here it stands. For centuries, people searched for some lost secret. There were theories of ramps stretching for miles, of spirals snaking up the sides. Some imagined pulleys, levers, rolling logs, and more recently hydraulic systems. But maybe the truth isn't one singular method. Maybe it's a symphony of techniques that evolved as each block rose higher. Little discoveries born from countless human hands. Trial. Error. Wisdom in motion. Archaeologists at Giza recently uncovered remnants of a ramp system, unlike anything seen before. It had wooden posts and thick rope grooves, allowing blocks to be pulled up steep inclines. Proof that the builders used clever physics to their advantage. The desert wasn't just their workplace. It was their laboratory. Some say the alignment of the pyramid is too perfect to be human. The sides face the cardinal directions with almost supernatural precision. But that supernatural precision may have just been extraordinary observation. Ancient Egyptians watched the stars like sailors. The night sky was their map, their clock, their faith written above. They found true north by tracking the motion of specific stars. Polaris didn't yet exist where it does today, and built according to cosmic order. For them, the heavens and the earth were one continuum. To build with the stars was to build with divine harmony. Think about that. Every block, every chamber, every angle planned not just as architecture, but as a pathway between worlds. The Pharaoh wasn't just buried there. He was reborn there. The pyramid was a resurrection machine. But still, questions remain. If not slaves, then who were these people? What drove them to give their lives to a king's tomb? The evidence suggests something remarkable. Community. Villages of workers were found near Giza complete with bakeries, breweries, and hospitals. Archaeologists discovered graffiti carved into the stones. Names like the Drunkards of Menkor or the Friends of Khufu. Jokes and pride scratched into eternity. They weren't building for a tyrant. They were building for Egypt. For the divine idea that the Pharaoh's ascent would keep the world in balance. Keep the sun rising, the Nile flowing, and the seasons in harmony. There's a humanity to that. Centuries of backbreaking labor not just for survival,
but for meaning. We might call it faith. They might have called it order. And yet, even in their precision, there's mystery. The interior chambers of the Great Pyramid still hide puzzles no one fully understands. Narrow shafts align with stars. Chambers distribute weight with impossible perfection. And deep inside, the king's chamber resonates with uncanny acoustic frequency. Some scientists believe this wasn't accident. The geometry amplifies sound in such a way that standing inside, you can feel your voice vibrate through stone. They weren't just building for sight. They were building for sound, for spirit, for eternity. What does it mean that after 4,500 years, we still stand in awe, scratching at the surface of their genius? That even with satellites, lasers, and AI reconstruction, we can't completely replicate what they achieved with copper tools and limestone. Maybe the story of the pyramids isn't about construction at all. Maybe it's about what humans become when they reach for something bigger than themselves. Because the real marvel isn't just in the engineering, it's in the belief that mattered enough to move mountains. They looked at the horizon and said, let's build forever. And somehow, they did. When you stand before the Great Pyramid, it doesn't feel ancient. It feels alive, like it's watching us, waiting to see if we ever understand what it means to dedicate a civilization's heart to a dream. Maybe that's the real mystery of Egypt. Not how they built it, but WHY.IN the end. The pyramids are not monuments to power. They're monuments to vision, to the human need to leave a mark that whispers through time. A message carved in stone, we were here. We believed. We built eternity with our hands. And maybe, just maybe, that's how civilization itself was born.